Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and today as always we have a ton of interesting things to cover but we're going to start it out with a meme. Rob Art just posted went from this to this in one day. Yes, <laughs> I just laughed at it because, well, a ton of people right now were really afraid with this XRP dip. I kept telling people it is not really something I worry about, to be completely honest. Over the last 30 um, minutes, actually, we've actually hit again about $1.90 here over on Bybit. And Bybit is the platform I'm using for all the XRP trading right now, moving like a freaking charm. It's mwah, creme de la creme. It has Dusty BC approval for the first time in a couple of years, right? I've known for this exchange for so long, but after years of talking with them, I finally am thinking, you know what? It's got my seal of approval. Everybody's using this. It works like a freaking charm. And the good thing is you make freaking profit in XRP if you're trading XRP, which is a lot better because if you make profit in USD, USDT, you have to switch it over to XRP, but sometimes it's really a chore and it's a little bit harder to do, but I freaking, oh, I love it, guys. And if you're in the US, use a VPN. A link is down below for that too. Now, $420 million in leverage long traders liquidated after XRP rallies to 196. I want to get into this and more, but first guys, make sure you quickly go press that like button to help out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't done so already, you should put on the subscription thingy with the notification bell just to make sure you get these crypto updates whenever they're necessary. You can always then decide to not watch them if you don't think it's important, but then at least you get the notification when I do post something. So you can't say, oh, Dusty, I didn't know. XRP price dropped by 20% shortly after making a 2021 high at $1.96. But have the altcoins bullish fundamentals changed? Well, I think you all know the answer to that one. I am a little bit amazed we didn't see a heavier XRP correction, to be completely honest. I mean, I give my update over on Patreon just now, and I've seen the price drop about 21% or so, but I personally would have liked it to drop more, even though everybody on Patreon, hopefully, but right here, which is already up about, let's see, 17% or so. Oh, that's looking juicy, 70% or so. We still could have gotten, I think, a little bit more out of this if it just dipped just a little bit further. Would have just been nice. I would have loved it because that means more XRP for us, but still. If you're wondering what the Patreon is, there's a link for that down below too. It's basically my group where I'm given when I'm buying coins and um, my portfolio, and there's a couple other things on there. So just check it out. Link is down below. You don't need it. If you are not into crypto that much, definitely don't buy it. It's more so for people who are you know, in there with some money out there. They want to maybe know what portfolio I have. They want to have some extra tips and want to know what coins I'm buying, when and why. Now, the whole leverage debacle, you could also say that this was all just happening because they wanted to kind of get some people out of the trades, just make them you know, lose their money, basically. Because, well, if a lot of people are leverage trading, right, and a, and a huge move like this happens they get liquidated, they lose their money. You might say that that's the bigger reason. I don't know. I've seen a ton of articles written on this right now, but nevertheless, the impressive $420 million long liquidations past 24 hours exceed those of February 1st when XP price crashed 46% in two hours, meaning there's a lot of people right now with long positions open and they got kind of destroyed today when the price just dropped. And again, in the end of things, I think it's all very freaking fine, guys. It just shows once more, there's a ton of people betting on the price to go up and they got shocked a little bit when the price fell down, but in the end, it's all okay. Then Jesse Hines, a lawyer, posted about things I would like to see from the SEC this year. First of all, a drop lawsuit against Ripple, basically meaning they would exit the lawsuit, just say, I'm done. I would personally say, uh, no, we wouldn't want it to be dropped because that would mean there's no clarity, right? But okay. Two means regulatory sandbox for companies engaging in digital assets. Once more, it's a little bit strange of a thing. A regulatory sandbox, I don't know exactly how that would be seen. Would that mean that they can try some stuff out and they would get approval or they can try some stuff out and then or how or what? When I'm thinking of a sandbox like that, I'm thinking of an environment where they can really freely do everything um, before really making it public or making it live. But then how would that work? I, I really am not sure. Three would be rather than more enforcement actions, more of a push towards Congress to create clear regulations. I agree with that one. And four, guidance. And then things I would like to see for myself, learning how to tweet lists. <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit confused with the reason he posted like this, but I guess <laughs> I like that one. I like that. I like that. I would say number three and four are the most important of all this. Like he says, we, re we need a freaking good rule book. I mean, Bitcoin and Ether were decided behind closed, door closed doors. I don't know why. 
and for guidance just whenever these companies want it like for example ripple give it to them and ripple you guys know it i've been so excited about xrp and about ripple's progress i've even tweeted out a little bit earlier today that the the history of ripple is a lot bigger than some people think it's really a lot freaking bigger i've posted let me quickly see what i posted on twitter so you guys can also enjoy that a little bit i posted right here a lot of people or a lot of this Ripple and pre-XRP stuff outdates Bitcoin, remember that. I don't think a lot of you guys knew that, and I'll show you guys why in just a second. But let's quickly see John Deaton here. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash that like button. It just helps out a little bit. The SEC enforcement claims that the motive of why the SEC filed the case against Ripple and Brad Bonley House and Chris Larson is irrelevant. Question, why would there ever be a motive? The reason should always be the same security violations is that conscientiousness of guilt or what an xp army news also said well i'm no attorney just a regular joe who once stayed at a ho holiday express one night my take is this was an attempt by jay clayton to prove in fact he was not an asset mission not accomplished i think it's uh interesting i don't really get the whole situation though i don't get what the sc is doing it's really looking like they're just making stuff up at the, as of this point but okay Right, let's go quickly check it out. Here is a tweet by Lord Vendetta, which shows Ripple is the only system that does something that uh, with trust besides concentrating it into a central server. This is said by Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin or creator group, we don't know. You can see here at the bottom here, my current to Satoshi Nakamoto email correspondence, April 2009. You might think this is fake. You might think you don't know what he's talking about, but this is actually something real. And I, again, I have some stuff to show you guys here. This is, for example, the subreddit of Ripple over on Twitter. Uh, sorry, Reddit of, Reddit, of course. Satoshi's thoughts on the original Ripple project. Jedi says, Ripple is interesting in that it's the only system that does something with trust besides concentrate it into central server by Albert Einstein. Oh, no, Satoshi Nakamoto. Ha, cool, ha, ha. Here, let's see. This is the XRP chat forum from 2017 August. And we can quickly see through here, for example. You can actually check back literally everything if you want to. For example these two posts but let's quickly see quote ripple is interesting in that it is the only other system that does something with trust besides concentrating to central server by satoshi nakamoto sunday april 12 2019 at 10 44 p.m here is the oh here is the paste bin from 2017 in this case here so somebody reposted it but it's from 2019 supposedly this email thing between mike hearn and satoshi nakamoto and uh, hi satoshi i read your paper on bitcoin with great interest now let's quickly just go control f ripple so many questions but it's rare that i encounter truly revolutionary ideas the last time i was this excited about a new monetary scheme was when i discovered ripple if you have any inputs or thoughts on ripple i'd love to hear them that is two let's see one two and then um i guess the response at the bottom here says my choice blah 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 blah, blah. For, okay, let's quickly read this part, actually. I think it's quite interesting. My choice for the number of coins and distribution schedule was an educated guess. It was a difficult choice because once the network is going, it's locked in, and we're stuck with it. I wanted to pick something that would make prices similar to existing currencies, but without knowing the future, that's very hard. That's interesting, huh? He wanted to make it too. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I ended up picking something in the middle. If Bitcoin remains a small niche, it'll be worth less than per unit than existing currencies, if you imagine it being used for some fraction of world commerce, which it is, then there's only going to be 21 million coins in the world. So it would be worth much more per unit. Values are 64-bit integers with eight decimal places. So one coin is represented internally as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There you guys get 100 million. There's plenty of granularity if typical prices become small. For example, if 0 0.001 is worth 1 euro, then it might be easier to change where the decimal point is displayed. So if you had 1 Bitcoin, now it's displayed as 1,000. And if you have 0, oh, and 0 0.001 is displayed as 1. Okay, that is interesting. That is, again, to kind of um, switch over Satoshi to Bitcoin, right? Where it's like... Uh, but it doesn't matter anymore. It's basically just because right now one big one Bitcoin is 100 million Satoshi. In the end, he's literally saying like, okay, if we want to make a system where, for example, 0 0.001 Bitcoin is worth one euro, we could actually change it over to actually just count the, um, I guess, one thousandth, for example, of a Satoshi as the newer unit. So that is basically just playing around with the supply without playing without changing the supply. Ripple is interesting in that is the only other system that does something with trust beside concentrated into a central server, which is basically the the um, 
the whole part here, of course, Bitcoin was made to make a new system that could fix the double spend problem in a decentralized way. And that's basically, they're saying Ripple is the only other one. This is again, 2009. Uh, let's see. Let's again, another one. It's the same one, I think. And at the bottom here, no, it's just again, a, a raw paste data. Okay. And you might be wondering, Dusty, what, what are you talking about here? Where is it coming from? Well, if we just quickly check here, you can see this is from 2017 too. It's basically just a, a confirmation of a lot of these emails between Mike Kern and Satoshi. I'm in the process of developing a website dedicated to early Bitcoin history. Mike Kern was gracious enough to contribute to the project by sharing his email conversations with Satoshi. Since these are never before seen writings of Satoshi, I thought others, this is the Bitcoin forum, by the way, I thought others would enjoy having access to them now rather than waiting for the website to go live. And here are some paste bins. If anyone else has anything they would like to share from early Bitcoin times, 2009, 2008, please email him, which most likely a lot of people have done. Really freaking cool, to be honest. Really freaking cool. There is already one. You can see a lot of emails from Satoshi and a lot of back and forwards. It's on the internet, all right? This is also four years ago. There's already a lot of new things which have been made. But if you check back here, go through the XRP chat form, you'll notice a couple of things. It was already shared in 2012 on the Bitcoin forum, for example. This is the, once more, um, XRP debacle. But it's been shared so many times, guys. I mean, why? that doesn't matter too much. Somewhere, somehow, some Bitcoin purists spontaneously combusted. I think that's pretty funny. That was some super interesting stuff. Cheers, lol. This is something else. Uh, something else. They'll just say, yes, but Ripple, not XRP. That's, again, just people being people. In the end, Ripple XRP. It's basically, from that point on, it's actually the same thing. Uh, then, once more, let's just quickly scroll through here. This one got me good. All the laughing made me wonder where Morty has been. He's always good for laughs. That's just a guy from this forum. It's what she deserves. Are you are you sure this is a quote? I don't think OpenCoin existed in those days. And certainly Ripple did not. That's the most interesting one, right? That's again where you are going to question like, hmm, he, why did he say that? Or what happened? What's the situation? Well, scroll through. It is Ryan Fugger's Ripple was around back then. Ripple, or an early, incarna early incarnation of it, does in fact predate Bitcoin. Fun stuff, the original Ripple Pay site is still up. This is again kind of predating. And if you really look back into, for example, David Schwartz and his, 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 contributions, for example, to the freaking world is the easiest way I can put it. You find so much stuff from really way before Bitcoin was ever created. And that's the thing. Bitcoin was the network basically to really do it the first, right? They, they did it first in a very popular way. They solved the double spend problem as, as one of the first decentralized systems, but it doesn't actually mean they were the first to really come up with a system like that. They were the first to make it really public, to make it really work, and kind of a niche type of thing, where it's like, okay, Bitcoin came in at around the right time, where it's really the financial crisis, with a really, I would say, nice branding, nice type of, type of hype with it. It didn't get that much adopted, you might say, but it actually did. It got a lot of traction really quickly. And I actually would like to refer back now to David Swartz's... Um, let me quickly see. I wanted to, I wanted to refer to his early... Wait, what was it? I was I was wanting to refer to one of the videos you just made earlier, but I, I kind of forgot now because of my uh, my rant here just a little bit. Where, oh yeah, sorry guys, the the tweet from earlier where I said because things haven't happened yet, it doesn't mean it won't happen, and it's basically where David Swartz has this whole tweet from Digital Asset Investor. Let me let me do it up here on the side. Digital Asset Investor, he tweeted it out, and I also was talking about it in the live stream. Let me quickly grab it back for you guys so I can hopefully tell you guys the full story here. It is this right here. I was asked if I had this whole write-up, he found it. It's basically what the CTO said about the price and where it can get to, right? At the bottom, he said, as for how likely these scenarios are, for example, XRP taking over Bitcoin, who can say? Ripple equaling Bitcoin's current market cap. This was when XRP was still called Ripple. Um, XRP actually, I think, stands for X Ripples. And Bitcoin, by the way, Bitcoin is often called XBT. X the same thing as XRP and an XBT stands for unknown currency or basically not connected to a country where U, for example, stands for United States. In this case, it's USD, so United States. But for a lot of other countries, it's like the first letter is like the country or something along those lines. That's really often the way it's done. Sometimes the first two. In Bitcoin and XRP's case, again, it's just an X because there's no current country connected to it. And RP for Ripple and BT for Bitcoin. At least that's the thing I would kind of say there. Who can say, Ripple equaling Bitcoin's current market cap sometime in the, in the near future doesn't seem any more outrageous to me now than the idea of Bitcoin selling for over $1,000 seemed to me in 2012 when Bitcoin was really not doing too much. And we also just early today were looking at that guy who sold his Bitcoins at about 30 cents and he was really uh, annoyed that it he didn't hold until about $8 or so, right? It's just like, because it ha doesn't, hasn't happened yet, it's not like it can't. And with XRP, I would say, really, 
if you start to think about it, there's no reason it cannot overtake Bitcoin and market cap eventually. There's no reason to think this one can't go to one trillion. There's no reason to think it's not possible that Bitcoin will be overthrown. Will it happen? Is another question entirely. Is it possible? Very much yes. So if you have some thing just keeping you back of thinking, oh, this coin can never do that or that, or that there are no restrictions. It's just what we can kind of visualize for ourselves now because that's logical. But we can also really hardly visualize, visualize for ourselves that the U.S. debt, for example, is going to eventually go to $400 trillion. You can't really imagine that that would be true, right? But here's just a little example. I'm going to type in U.S. world, oh no, world debt clock. I'm going to type that in for you guys right now. Right, so I have the, the world debt clock opened. Right now, the national debt in the United States is about $28 trillion. But if we quickly go look here, what they were expecting for 2025, you can see here right now, 28.1 trillion. If you see 2025, you're seeing the US national debt is expected to be about 50 or 49.8 trillion dollars. And again, if you look five years into the future, maybe this is doubled again. If you look five years into the future, maybe it's doubled again. Maybe within our time here that we are still alive, it's gonna be a freaking, uh, 400 who knows 400 freaking trillion dollars who the frick knows i don't personally but i'm just quickly saying it's unimaginable for you right now because it's so ridiculously high but that doesn't mean it's not possible it doesn't mean it's not going to happen it's just we, we can't really think of it because we haven't ever seen something like that happen before you guys feeling me with that one so just think about that for a little second hopefully you enjoyed this update i think it was a pretty cool one just personally i think so and uh, yeah that was it for today hopefully you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys again in another crypto update uh hopefully pretty soon yeah, tomorrow, of course, as you guys know. I mean, man, man, make sure you press the subscribe button. Make sure you check out Bybit if you want to trade XRP or freaking other currencies, by the way. There's a ton of things on there. But uh, XRP is just the one I like the most because you can freaking get XRP by trading XRP. It's freaking lovely. So, yeah.